Welcome to Church Unleashed, a Lutheran ministry that wants you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know that faith can often seem like a wrestling match, life overwhelming and hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward to prepare for the week ahead. So join us every week, either on TV or online. Take a deep breath as we begin worship together. Good morning, I'm Pastor Steve Bigner. And I'm Pastor Jeremiah. Pastor Roger will be with us in just a few moments, but we're so grateful and glad that you could join us for worship. But we wanna take just a moment before we dive in to that worship to just acknowledge that today is September 11th. I'm sure all of us remember where we were. I was in sixth grade history class as we watched that uh, horrific event, but as we also watched the heroes that day. So we just wanna take a moment as we all resolve to be instruments of God's peace. Yeah, and that ties into our theme for this month and especially this week of God's living waters pouring over us, continuing to move in and around us through the most difficult times of our lives. God's pouring out that love and grace over us today, especially if you're having a difficult time today. But we're glad you're here in worship. We welcome you to this time of worship uh, and appreciate that you've taken the risk to be with us today. So let's take a time of confession together and hear about God's love, grace, and forgiveness for us all. We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of mercy and forgiveness, we, we confess, confess that, that sin still has a hold on us. us. We, we have, have harmed your good, good creation. creation. We, we have, have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk, walk humbly with, with you. Turn us in a new direction. direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our, be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, through the living waters of baptism, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, so follow him now and walk in God's abiding love. Amen. For all the saints who from everybody it's time for my favorite part of the service it's time for the children's message a message for the young and the young at heart today we're hearing one of my favorite stories from the spark bible jesus loved telling stories to people about something lost being found he said once there was a woman who had 10 little silver coins one day she was counting them and she discovered that she only had nine what do you think she did did she just think to herself, oh well, I still have nine, I won't bother looking. No, she did not. She swept high and low, top to bottom, looking all over. She looked under and around 
everything until she found the lost coin. Oh, she was so happy that she had a party. She invited all her friends and family to celebrate. God is like this woman. Jesus said God would never stop looking for someone who was lost. When I hear this story, I think of a time I was out camping with my brother where we are in the beautiful nature, not unlike this. And after hiking for about an hour or so, I was certain that it was time to head back and that we should go to the right. I didn't realize how lost I was. My brother steered me to the left. He said, no, this is the way. The entire time I'm grumbling, we're going the wrong way, we're going the wrong way. And he said, follow me. After about 15 minutes, we popped out into a clearing and there was our campsite. Had we followed the way I wanted to go, we would have been completely lost. In fact, I was already lost and I didn't even know it. Without my brother's guidance, we wouldn't have made it back. Have you ever been lost? There is good news that in the waters of baptism, God has claimed us and named us as a part of God's family. And so we can never be lost to God. The waters of baptism, in fact, they even steer us to pursue these promises, to respond to the love we have been given. So not only can we never be lost, but in fact, God has shown us the way in the person of Jesus. And so as you're still getting used to being back to school, may the waters of baptism remind you that God has found you, and may they guide your life and your love, not just in school, not just when we're out hiking, but this day and always. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for finding us. Help us to follow your way. Amen. Our Holy Gospel for this week comes from Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter. We are pretty much dead center of the middle of Luke's story of what Jesus is doing. And he's been teaching the disciples and us really about what discipleship looks like, about what it means to follow Jesus. So here's what he tells them. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this guy welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she's found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Friends, this is the good news. It's the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, so Jesus teaches them about how tough it is to have something lost. And he ties it into the repentance of people returning to God. But I think a lot in this scripture about God wanting us to return. I think a lot about God searching for us as if we are lost and wanting to make sure that God searches for us until we're found because it is really annoying to lose things every once in a while and by every once in a while i mean at least once a day my wife loses her phone at home she has no idea where it is and so we finally uh, the kids and i bought her for christmas one day uh, one year an apple watch now i finally have an apple watch too we gave hers to her strictly for the fact that by pressing a button on her apple watch it would make her phone beep or light up or do something that she would be able to find it. And it is actually amazing that things have gotten much less stressful around our house, especially in the morning 
when she's late for going to work and can't find the phone. Now she presses the button and the lost has been found. She rejoices when it happens. And we rejoice that there's much less yelling and screaming around the house. So you have this really easy little thing just to press and it helps you out. It's funny to see sometimes when she presses it and it's under her leg. That's one of the best times. I've lost things before. Maybe you've lost things before too. It's annoying, it's hard. I recently, this past summer, had uh, just the incredible privilege and joy to be able to go and visit Scotland with nine of my best friends, most of who are also pastors in the Lutheran Church from all over the East Coast. And we were planning this trip for a couple years to go over and, and golf together and just share stories and make memories and do incredible things together. But it's really centered around golf. So at Christmas, I asked all my family, hey, can you chip in and for my Christmas gift, can, can, can we get some new golf clubs for Steve? Because he's using these ones that are 30 years old and the technology had improved so much that I said, well, it, maybe it's time to get some new golf clubs. So we got the new golf clubs. I kind of learned how to use them differently. The ball actually went a little further and a little straighter, not because of my swing, but because of technology. And I was really excited to have these golf clubs on my trip to Scotland. Well, everything got closer to the day and suddenly the day before I found out, as maybe you are finding out, my travel plans were canceled. I ended up having to drive, instead of leaving from Buffalo Drive, all the way to Washington, D.C., get on a plane there, fly over through Dublin, transfer over to Aberdeen, Scotland, and it worked. It was very stressful, but it worked. And I got to Aberdeen and, oh, after the the angst of all of this travel and very excited to go golfing for several days with my friends. I went to pick up my luggage, no golf clubs for a golf trip. And it was annoying. And there was nothing I could press on my Apple Watch to make these things appear and we still don't know where we are. And in fact, if any of you are watching from Dublin, Ireland and you see a black bag filled with golf clubs, check to see if they're mine and let me know because we still don't know where we are. And it's frustrating. And I realized that these are what we would call first world problems in the world, that I couldn't find my golf clubs. I was able to rent them and play as bad as I would have with my own clubs. But there's certain things in life that when we don't have them and we're not connected to them, it really annoys us. It stresses us out. And I don't mean just golf clubs. I mean times when we're grieving and we're missing that person that was such a part of our lives and such a part of our joy when we're stressed out about our safety and we're not sure uh, you know what's next or we're, we're not sure what direction to go or we've lost a job and we're transitioning into something new and we don't know how it goes or we lost the security of our school and we're moving into a different school or we're going to college and we're just not sure how to operate the things that we were connected to that we could hang on to we don't have anymore and sometimes it's not as easy as just pressing a button on our watch and having them return. Jesus tells us these stories in here so that we will know in our faith life, we will never have to worry about losing God because God will never lose us. And there's story after story in the Bible about what it's like for God to not be connected to God's children, to us, and the ways that God searches and goes after and tries to pour out over again and again prophet after prophet through the Old Testament comes to tell the people that God loves, hey, return to me and I will throw open the storehouse of love and grace and I will pour all of that on you. I will pour those living waters on you again. That's the promise that God makes for all of us. There is never a lostness that you and I will experience that is too big that will drive us away from God. Nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus is what Paul tells to the Roman congregation. He tells them that no matter what happens in our lives, those life-giving waters, those baptismal waters that maybe started in your life a long time ago can pour out over you again and again and again and reconnect you to God. You know, I share this message with you on September 11th, a day that for our country is a very important one to not forget and to remember the lives of those that were lost and remember the changes that happened on that day. My work with first responders after the event and continuing to work with them now reminds me of how those living waters pour over us in the hardest of times. 
Some of those that were at Ground Zero lost that day 343 of their closest brothers, colleagues, sisters, friends. And they sat in maybe on rocks like this or on the curb and just were exasperated. They didn't know how to move forward at some point. Well, at that site and at sites now, whether it's a fire in your neighborhood or a car accident, if our first responders are there for a while, we have something called a rehabilitation tent, a place that they can go and be refreshed and checked on. Sometimes they'll come over to those spots and they'll sit down like they did on that first 9-11 and they'll be covered in ash and they'll be covered in dirt from being in a house or a home or having something fall down around them. And it's always important for me to see them take a bottle of water and just pour it over their face. And they wash this exasperated stress off of them and they wash the ash off of them. And I remind them if I'm next to them that these are God's waters pouring out over them, reminding them that they are loved and I thank them for going into that house or that fire or whatever they were facing. Those waters pour out over all of us. They are there still in our lives today to refresh us and remind us that when we feel lost, we are not lost to God. And God is ready to welcome us home again at all times, ready to rejoice that that is happening. That great story of the prodigal son and father. The son is off doing what the son is doing, spending his father's inheritance. We don't know much about the father. We know that he runs, but as a dad, I think that he's probably standing by the window waiting. He was probably looking out over the horizon wondering, is today the day that I'll be able to see my son again? And that's how God reaches and loves us. Wants us to know that we are constantly cared for. We are constantly sought after. Those waters are constantly pouring out over us. For this whole time that I've been rambling on to you today, do you know what's happening behind me? The waters are flowing. The waterfall is overflowing for each of us. Waters of baptism, waters of love, waters of compassion and grace. And we as Church Unleashed, our call is to go and share those waters with everyone around us. To let those waters pour out over the people that are in need. You are the church to unleashed into the world. You might be the one that needs to search for that lost coin or that sheep. You might be the one that needs to put that sheep over your shoulders and carry it and rejoice when you have found it. When you see these waters behind me, when you see the waters that you splash in in a pool, when you see the waters of a shower that pours over you or a bath that you're in or, or the, the sink that comes up in the morning, remind yourself of the waters of baptism. Remind yourself of the love that God poured out over you one day and pours out over you again today. Let them be reminders as you and I go into the world that we are church unleashed to share that love and grace with all we meet. Let's press that button on our phone and remind all that they are found and loved. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is his name. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is his name. And we sing Hosanna in the highest heaven. is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is his name. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is his name. And we sing Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna to the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna to the Lord. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I invite you to join me as we pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. Lord, today we, we pray for your church. We pray for all the places where division and disagreement separate us. Remind us that we are all together washed in the waters of baptism, that, that you have made us one in your promise of love. Lord, we pray for this creation that you have made. We thank you for it. We, we, we bless you for it. We, we give you thanks for this water that you've given to us to, to drink that sustains us and nourishes us in all the places where our pollution and waste have, have ruined those resources, just teach us how to be better. Just make us better so that we might take care of this, this world, this precious world that you've given us. Lord, we pray for this world and for all the, the, the powers and the nations that, that we have brought upon it that you would put wisdom and compassion into the hearts of leaders, that they would make decisions based upon the, the interests and the needs of all your people, not, not out of selfishness, but, but out of love. Lord, today we, we remember tragedy. We remember that in a moment, everything can change. We honor the lives lost on September 11th. We give you thanks for all those uh, first responders who rushed in that day to help, all those who gave their lives out of compassion and a, a, a call to service. Help us to honor them by the decisions that we make that, that take care of them even today as they continue to suffer from illnesses that they contracted in those days. Lord, we give you thanks for all the saints, all those who have died and now rest with you, all those who have gone before, who have told us the story, who have taught us compassion. We thank you and we bless you for them and with them and the whole world. We ask that you hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Steve, I'm holding something in my hand. It is mail time. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> so again, we're catching up on, we've received so many fantastic letters over the summer. This one came back in June from our good friend, Dan. He writes, I'm writing to let you know how relevant and meaningful your Church Unleashed program is to me. Your passion of faith is palpable. Your messages of hope and acceptance and forgiveness are inspirational. He says, I make these comments to you as a lifelong atheist. And yet, Dan's finding hope and reasons to, to believe something is still drawing you to this service. We're so grateful 
and glad that you are joining us. Yeah. And wherever you find yourselves on your faith journey, whether you've been a lifelong Lutheran or maybe you're hearing the gospel for the very first time, we're so grateful for each and every one of you, each one who lets us know what's going on for your support that makes this ministry possible, that helps you reach people, like I said Dan, but I think his name's Don, that help you reach people like Don. Uh, we're grateful and glad for each of you. Yeah, and as we were filming this week at Glens Falls, these life-giving waters around us, we even had people stopping up and asking us, hey, is there a mass that's about to start yeah. here? Because uh, we all looked so pastorly in our polo shirts and collars, uh, mainly the collars. But uh, she asked, and then we told her when it was, and, and she's going to check it out. And if you have friends that you think might be uh, blessed by this time of worship together, by hearing scripture, praying together from wherever you are watching, invite them. Share the information with them. Pass on the website uh, and, and let them know that they are welcome to join us in worship and be part of Church Unleashed as well. So thank you for being here today. As you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend. Above you to watch over you and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating and rejoicing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. May you be unleashed to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.